Dear students, in the last class we have studied the basic terms used in isolation of elements and the two concentration methods. Let us continue the concentration methods here. Third method of concentration of ores is froth rotation method. This method is mainly used for those ores which contain sulfur, especially sulfide ores. And in this process, a suspension of powdered ore is mixed with water and collectors. The collectors which enhance the non wettability of the material, mineral particles, and proof is pumped. The gang particles which combines with water and settles at the bottom. The fruit formed here, it has to be stabilized. To stabilize the fruit, the fruit stabilizers are used. Commonly used fruit stabilizers are cresols and anil. The fruit formed here, it is, which is lighter in paint and uh, collected on the surface of the furnace, which is skimmed off and it is dried to separate the ores. Hence, the ores which contain sulfur or the sulfide ores which can be concentrated by rotation methods. Remember, here sometimes we have the sulfide ore which contain two sulfide ores, such as zinc sulfide and lead sulfide, for example. Our target is to get only one of the sulfide ores into the fruit. For example, zinc sulfide and lead sulfide, they have a need lead sulfide in the fruit, but not zinc sulfide. What is to be done? It is done, that means, we can separate lead sulfide from zinc sulfide by using uh, depressants. For this method, or for the separation of zinc sulfide from lead sulfide, we have to use sodium cyanide as the depressant. <clears throat> this is the schematic uh, representation of rock rotation method. A furnace which contains a rotating pattern, the furnace is mixed with the ore and fine oil and water is placed in it. Rotating paddle is rotated. The ore which combines with the fine oil, fine oil converts into flow. Since it is lighter in weight, collect on the surface, skimmed off, dried and heated strongly to separate the ores. The gang present in it gets wetted by water and collect on the bottom of the furnace. Now the last method that is the leaching. Leaching is a method which is used to concentrate those ores which are soluble in suitable salt, especially bauxite ore which is concentrated by leaching. The bauxite ore which contains impurity such as silica, titanium oxide, etc. The bauxite ore which mainly contains alumina which is treated with sodium hydroxide because bauxite ore is soluble in sodium hydroxide at 473 to 523 Kelvin and 35 to 36 bar pressure. Sodium hydroxide combines with Al2O3 and converts into sodium aluminate. This sodium aluminate, then it is neutralized by carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide combines with alumina and converts into, that means it is neutralized into hydrated alumina and sodium hydrogen carbonate. This hydrated alumina, then it is filtered, dried and heated strongly to the alumina, which is free from the impurities. This technique is also used to concentrate the metals like gold and silver. Here, what is to be done? The metals like gold and silver, which is mixed with or diluted with sodium cyanide or potassium cyanide solution, extremely dilute solution of sodium cyanide or potassium cyanide is used in the process in the process of A. Metals like gold or silver which combines with the water or cyanide because it is dilute solution in the process of air to give metal cyanide complex. Now that metal cyanide complex is mixed with zinc metal. The cyanide present in the metal cyanide complex combines with zinc to form zinc cyanide complex, separating metal. That metal is free from the impurities. This is the another leaching process to concentrate metals like gold and silver.
Once we get the concentrator board, our target is to separate metal from the concentrator board. To do that, we have to convert the concentrator ore into oxide ore in the first step. Then our target is to reduce the metal from its oxide ore. Then the thing is how to do or how to convert the concentrated ore into oxide ore. There are two methods. First one is calcination. Calcination, it is mainly used to remove the volatile impurities present in the concentrated ore. Here, the ore is heated either in the absence of A or in the limited supply of A, the volatile impurities are removed. For example, hydrated Fe2O3 is heated strongly, volatile water molecule is separates, leaving behind the Fe2O3. Zinc carbonate containing carbon dioxide is volatile impurity removed by heating to get zinc oxide ore. And calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate is also heated strongly to separate carbon dioxide with the volatile impurity. Hence, we can convert the concentrated ore into oxide ores by calcination, which containing volatile impurities. Another method is roasting. This roasting, it is done to convert especially non-oxide ores to oxide ore. Here, what is to be done? The ore is heated strongly in the presence of excess of A. In the presence of excess of A, the non-oxide ore, such as sulfide ores, converted into oxide ore. Say, for example, zinc sulfide, which combines with the oxygen, converts into zinc oxide. Lead sulfide converts into lead oxide. Copper sulfide converts into copper oxide. Thing is, when we choose copper oxide, it is done in a reverberatory furnace because it contains iron. It is mixed to remove iron. It is mixed with silica, and uh, that iron is removed as iron silicate (FeSiO3), which is impurity and is removed out. Then this is the diagrammatic representation of the reverberatory furnace. Then, after converting into the oxide ore, our target is to separate metal from its oxide ore. How to do it? Sometimes certain metal oxides like silver oxide, mercuric oxide, they do not need any reducing agent. They undergo self-decomposition with the metal at around 500 to 600 Kelvin. But maximum of the metal oxide, they need a suitable reducing agent. How to choose the reducing agent we are going to speak now. For example, you can see a metal oxide here, MHOY, and carbon is used as a reducing agent. That carbon combines with oxygen, converts into carbon monoxide and separation of metal. Hence, metal is reduced, metal is reduced from its metal oxide by using carbon as a reducing agent. How to choose the reducing agent? Say, to understand this, the variation in the temperature requirement for thermal reductions called pyrometallurgy, and to predict which element will suit, which element will suit as the reducing agent for the given metal oxide can be done by using Gibbs energy interpretation. Then what is Gibbs uh, free energy relationship? That is explained by thermodynamic principles of metallurgy. We have studied from our first view, gibbs helmholtz equation is given by delta G is equal to delta H minus K into delta S. Where delta H is the enthalpy change, delta S is the entropy change. And also delta G is equal to minus RT ln K, where K is the equilibrium constant and T is the temperature. These two equations can be used to know the value of delta G and to choose which is the better reducing agent. Now just check how to choose the reducing agent. To apply this, we have to check the two points here. When the value of delta G is negative in the equation only, then the reaction will proceed. Suppose you can consider only one of the metal oxide, for example, HG, which decomposes to give HG plus O2. Here, 
for the equation delta g can be calculated by using the equation delta h minus k into delta s delta g is found to be negative therefore that equation does not require any reducing agent maximum cases that does not follow we have to use a reducing agent in such a case say point number two if reactant and products of two reactions one reaction is the decomposition of metal oxide other one is the oxidation of the reducing agent when we add the delta g value of those two equations find to be negative then that element is used as a reducing agent to know that we have to use a diagram called a lingam diagram i'll explain that in the next part now just go for how to choose the reducing agent based on thermodynamics so already i have said when we use the reducing agent we have to use two equations equation number one you can see here metal oxide which decomposes to give metal and oxygen and the reverse equation is the oxidation of the metal that means when metal undergoes oxidation to give metal oxide you can think of only this equation metal oxide decomposes to give metal and oxygen metal and oxygen now our target is to separate this oxygen we have to use a reducing agent how to use that that we can say for the reduction is being carried out through the equation one the oxidation of the reducing agent either carbon or carbon monoxide will be there we have to use it does not mean that only carbon or carbon monoxide is used any reducing agent can be used here for the example we have taken carbon or carbon monoxide carbon combines with oxygen gives carbon monoxide delta g value changes carbon to carbon monoxide carbon monoxide if you use reducing agent oxidizes to carbon dioxide delta g carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide if carbon is taken there may also be complete oxidation of the element carbon dioxide half carbon with half oxygen gives half carbon dioxide delta g is also carbon to carbon dioxide now i have to choose whether carbon or carbon monoxide is the suitable reagent what to do already i said two equations cancel equation number one we found in the last ppt metal oxide decomposes to give metal and half oxygen that half oxygen combines with either coke or carbon monoxide or carbon we have to add the two equations one equation metal oxide decomposes that combines with coke so the combination of the two equation metal oxide with the coke or this coke gives metal and carbon monoxide second equation metal oxide combines with carbon monoxide gives metal and carbon dioxide and the third metal oxide with this carbon gives metal any of the combination equations you can think of if we find the value of delta g is negative if we find the value of delta g is negative then we can use carbon is reducing agent only when when you add the equation of metal oxide with coke decomposes to give metal and carbon monoxide whose delta g value is found to be negative then carbon is used as a reducing agent or metal oxide when it is treated with the carbon monoxide it decomposes to give metal and carbon dioxide if delta g value is found to be negative here then carbon monoxide is used as a reducing agent or if metal oxide is treated with the coke if it decomposes to give metal and carbon dioxide in this case if you find delta g is negative then you can use carbon as a reducing agent that is total here the meaning of thermodynamic principle is that any reducing agent is chosen which it combines with metal oxide whose delta g value must be negative if delta g value is found to be negative then that element is used as a reducing agent how to understand this this can be better understand by using elegant diagram that i explain in the next class now you can observe here extraction of iron from its oxide by you can do then by two ways one is by blast furnace another one is by 
Ellingham diagram. Let me explain Ellingham diagram first, then I will come back into the blast furnace later. What is to be done? Iron oxide I have. I have to use a reducing agent here, either coke or carbon monoxide. When I treat this iron oxide with coke, decomposes to give iron and carbon monoxide, whose delta G value is negative, then carbon is used as a reducing agent. When iron oxide is treated with, then how to identify this? The iron oxide decomposes to give iron and half O2. That's what I said in the beginning. Metal oxide decomposes to metal with half oxygen. That is treated with the reducing agent. Coke combines with this oxygen converts into coke. Now there are two equations. When you add these two equations, if we find delta G is negative, then I can choose carbon as a reducing agent. Carbon is using reducing agent. If not, then I have to go for the same reducing agent at a different temperature. So this is a trial and error at different temperature. We have to check whether that reducing agent acts as a reducing agent for the reduction of metal from its oxide or not. If not, then we have to go for the other reducing agent. So naturally, the resultant reaction will be takes place when the right hand side equation is negative. This is identified from Ellingham diagram already said that it's graphical representation of delta G naught versus temperature. So this is the Ellingham diagram. From this, we can identify the whether this coke acts as a better reducing agent or carbon monoxide acts as a better reducing agent for the reduction of iron from iron oxide. First, try to understand what is an Ellingham diagram. It is the graphical representation of delta G naught versus temperature in Kelvin. Delta G naught versus temperature in Kelvin. There are large number of plots you can see. Now, let me explain you extraction of iron from iron oxide either by using carbon or carbon monoxide. If by carbon at what temperature? If by carbon monoxide at what temperature is the case? See, iron oxide and the carbon to carbon monoxide meets at the point of 673 according to our Ellingham diagram here. Strictly speaking, it is, happens at 1073 Kelvin. This is the temperature you can find. However, according to Ellingham diagram here, 673 Kelvin is the meeting point. At 673 Kelvin, the carbon to carbon monoxide lies down and Iron to iron oxide lies above. See, any plot which lies below, which has delta G negative is more or delta G value is more negative and which is more stable and can be used as a reducing agent. That is why above 673 Kelvin, carbon is used as a better reducing agent for the reduction of iron from iron oxide because that is more stable since its delta G value is more negative. Similarly, you can observe below 673 Kelvin. Below 673 Kelvin, you can find carbon to carbon monoxide line lies above. Therefore, it is less stable than iron to iron oxide. Hence, carbon to carbon monoxide cannot be used as a reducing agent below 673 Kelvin. On the other hand, you can observe carbon to carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide which lies below that indicates whose delta G naught value is more negative and it is more stable. Therefore, carbon monoxide is used as a better reducing agent below 673 Kelvin. Because below 673 Kelvin, the carbon monoxide line lies below than iron oxide line. Hence, below 673 Kelvin, we can use carbon monoxide as a better reducing agent. And above 673 Kelvin, coke as a better reducing agent as per this freedom diagram. But practically found that 1073 Kelvin is the temperature above which coke is used as a better reducing agent 
and below which carbon monoxide is used as a reducing agent that we can understand in the extraction of iron by blast furnace in the next class.